Good morning, everyone. Hope your first day of remote learning went well. Um, I'm going to read to you Chapter 11 today of A Dog's Promise. Hope you're enjoying this read aloud. Thanks again to Lily for the book. We were back to doing school, it looked like. Only oh, this time Chase Dad drove, taking us in the truck. He did wrong. He did it wrong, dropping Grant off at his building before Burke at school. But at least Chase Dad knew the right place. I wagged excitedly when all of the children when I saw all of the children on the steps. Chase Dad turned to us, wait here. He left us and walked to the building. As he mounted the stairs, boys and girls scooted out of his way. After a moment Burke opened his door. Come on, Cooper, I did it. I did steady. We rolled over to the stairs and I did assist until about midway up, my boy sat next to Wendley. Cooper, she greeted, holding out her lacy scented hands. I buried my nose in them, inhaling with forceful snorts. I wondered why Wenley would come to this place and not bring Lacey. Everyone would be so much happier if Lacey were here. Several people called out Burke's name as he was waving and responding, so I let Wenling pet me and I put my head in her lap. I knew I was getting my scent on her and that when she got home, Lacey would smell her and think of me. My dad sent himself to the principal's office, Burke told Wenling. Oh, for the drone? I figure at least two hours detention. <laughs> Wenling laughed softly. He's going to try to talk Mrs. Hawkface into letting me bring Cooper to class, Burke explained. I'm going to write a theme paper on what happens when two immovable objects collide. Everyone says they have to allow it. Legally, I mean, Wendling noted. Everyone meaning the entire eighth grade? Well, we haven't talked to a lawyer, but I did some research, and yeah, they can only ban him if he bit somebody. Wendling stroked my head. You would never hurt anybody, would you, Cooper? Of course he wouldn't. Do you smell Lacey on me? Is that why you're sniffing me, Cooper? I looked up at her. Lacey? Was Lacey coming? A stirring around me, above me, drew my attention. The children were sliding over and Chase Dad was descending the steps. He was doing his angry walk. He saw Burke and stopped. Burke! He took a deep breath. We're leaving. Come on. Chase Dad stooped as if to pick Burke up and Burke held out both hands. His arms did. No! Let Cooper, Dad. Suit yourself, Chase Dad, angry walk to the truck. Burke turned to Winley. I think probably it didn't go all that well with Mrs. Hawkins. I'll visit you in prison. <laughs> Burke chuckled. Bye, Winley. Bye, Burke. I did assist down the steps and steady for the chair. When Burke lifted himself into the truck, Chase Dad put the chair in back. I blinked at how loudly Chase Dad shut the door. I told you to wait in the truck. I wanted to say hi to my friends. Chase Dad shook his head. You're, I don't want you having anything to do with that girl. Who, Wendley? What do you mean? I mean, her family is trying to put our family out of business. Her father is an engineer for the Robo Farmers. Chase Dad drove for a time, and my boy was silent. I mean it, Burke. What do you guys think? Do you think Wendley has anything to do with the fight between the parents? Hmm. What did Principal Hawkins say? Chase Dad hands made a twisting noise on the steering wheel. She says Cooper was disruptive, that the teachers couldn't teach with him in class, and that children were afraid because he's so big. <laughs> Burke's laugh was quick and harsh. What? That is such bull. Nobody did anything but try to pet him before class. Cooper knows how to stay. Well, that's what she says, so you're going to have to leave the dog at home. Burke stared out the side window. His hands on my neck felt tense. I get it then. His voice was bitter and his face was dour and scowling. I watched him anxiously. What was wrong? Chase Dad glanced at him. Get what? What are you talking about? Because you have a fight with Wenling's dad. You want me to get involved, even though Wenling and I have nothing to do with it. But when I fight with the school, you not only won't help me, you want to just give up. We drove in silence past the goat ranch, which smelled as wonderful as always. Look, son, this is a battle we can't win. The institutions have all the money and all the power. If we try to fight, they'll crush us. Then why not sell out to the Robo Farmer Corporation? Burke wiped his eyes, and I licked his face, concerned for the sad and angry emotions radiating off his hot skin. Why fight for anything? Burke turned in his seat. This means everything to me, Dad. Don't you get it? I do get it that it seems important, but believe me, when you're older, this is happening now, he yelled loudly. I flinched from the harsh tone in Burke's shout, from the torrent of hot emotions to pouring from him. Why don't you care how I feel? Settle down, son. 
Nobody said anything else all the way home. Normally car rides made me happy, but this one was sad and tense, and I was glad to get out and run and terrify the ducks. On the way up the, from the pond, I saw something black slinking out of the barn. My nose told me it was the mystery animal. It was small and smooth, and when it glimpsed me, it dashed around the corner and seemed to vanish. I tracked it to a big hole in the side of the barn. I sh Oh my gosh, do you know what this is going to be? I'm not sure, but I remember back to Bailey. I tracked it to a big hole in the side of the barn. I shoved my nose in that hole and inhaled deeply. Disappointed, the creature hadn't wanted to play with me, and I wondered if they lived out in barns. Why did so many people carry that odor in their clothing? After that, things were normal. Oh, I guess I was wrong. I thought it was a skunk. Grant left most mornings. Chase Dad played outside with plants or drove around in a small truck. And sometimes I watched him, especially when all Burke was doing was talking to Grant or sitting and staring at a light on a table and barely moving. I'm impressed you're doing calculus too, she remarked to him one day, but it's over my head. I'm afraid I can't help you anymore. That's okay, Grandma. The online lessons are fine. I love it. But I get that some people find math boring. Oh, not at all, honey. Watching your brain develop has been one of my greatest thrills. You make me so proud. Grandma leaned down, and Burke put his arms around her, and I climbed up to shove my head in between them to make the moment even more special. We went outside, and I trotted straight to the barn. The mystery creature's fragrance was everywhere. There was no sign of the creature. Burke wheeled down to the dock to ruffle dry-sounding papers in his bag, and the leaves were pouring from the trees in a steady rain that made a similar rustling noise. I sprawled contentedly at his feet and was mostly asleep when a special scent jolted me to my feet. Cooper? Burke called as I scrambled off the rock, my nails digging into the wood. Lacey! She was coming to me and it was as if she had never been separated for a moment. Of course Lacey found me. We belonged together and we both knew it. I couldn't go find her because I needed to take care of my boy, but Wendley would, could walk on her own without Lacey. Without Lacey. What a wonderful day. While well, Burke sat and watched, Lacey and I chased ducks and leapt in the water and sniffed along the shore. I smelled one thing on her and knew this meant that Lacey would have to leave again. But at that moment, I had her all to myself. Whenever Burke called, Cooper, Lacey, we made our way back to him, but soon was absorbed in each other again. Nothing is better than when your personal and your favorite dog are both there when your person and your favorite dog are both there. My sense of the lateness of the afternoon told me that Grant would be home very soon, and then it would be all of us having fun together. The ducks were gathered in a grumpy knot, the marshy area across from the dock. But when Lacey and I dashed through the muck, the birds squawked and I flapped out to the center of the pond, scolding us. I was first to see the snake. I froze for a moment, and it did too. The world curled back on itself, its tongue flicking out, eyes cold as they watched me. <clears throat> I barked at it and it raised its head higher. I didn't know why, but I instantly wanted to attack it, bite it, even kill it, and compulsion went through me like a shiver. The fur was on the back of my neck and my bark carried a furious tone. In response, the snake shook its tail, not in a wag, but more like a tremble, making a scratching sound. Rattlesnake? What do you guys think? I don't know really where they live. Cooper. What is it? On the dock, Burke wheeled his chair to peer at me. Lacey charged up to see what I had found. That same ferocious rage crackled along her spine, forcing her tail rigid. She started barking and snarling too. She circled around behind it, and the snake wove its head back and forth, trying to keep us, each of us in view. Dogs, what do you see? I darted forward, and the snake snapped out, nearly reaching my face, and I scrambled back. It was fast. It instantly turned toward Lacey, and I went after it again, and I struck at it. And it struck at me, and Lacey jumped on its back and picked up, up like a stick. I instantly, the snake curled, biting Lacey's face. No, Lacey, no, drop it, leave it, no, Burke screamed at her. Lacey shook her head, her eye twitching just above where the fangs were sunk in her jaw. The snake struck again, and Burke was still screaming, and finally Lacey dropped the snake, which immediately fled into the reeds. Lacey, come, Cooper. There was no mistaking the fear in his voice. Something very serious just happened. We ran to Burke. Lacey had her ears lowered, and I knew she felt she had been a bad dog because I felt the same way. Burke, however, did not seem angry as he extended his arms. Lacey, oh no, come here, girl. Lacey went to Burke and sat. He seized her jaw in his hands and twisted it, peering at the side of her face. Lacey's tail tapped the dock. 
I pushed forward because Burke was writing a horrible fear and I knew he needed me. Though it was Lacey, he hugged, pulling her up into his chair, squeezing tears out of his eyes. I did sit, not understanding. Oh, God, Lacey, I'm so sorry. It really got you bad. He looked up at the house. Dad! Burke's frantic wail came as a voice I'd never heard before. Raw and scared. Dad! Hurry, Dad! The wind pushed Burke's shout back at us. He turned to me. Cooper, come! I obeyed and felt a snick as he attacked my short leash to my harness. Pull, Cooper, with Lacey in his lap and his hands not moving, not helping move his wheels. Burke was much harder to drag, but I dug in my claws and, claws and strained up the hill, making slow progress. Dad! Dad! Burke cried, Dad, help! I expected to chase Dad, but instead, after a moment, it was Grant who burst out the front door and came running down. Hurry, Burke yelled. Grant's boots thud in the heart back there. What is it? Lacey got bitten by... Mazaqua. A what? A northern rattlesnake. What? You sure? Grant, I saw it. It's poisonous. Its venom is more toxic than a rattle ra regular rattlesnake, and it got her again and again. you got to drive her to the vet now. Did it get Cooper, Cooper too? No, thank God. Should we suck out the venom? No, that might kill us. Just go. Grant clapped his hands together. Come on, Lacey. Lacey seemed to hesitate, gouging the leap from Burke's chair to the ground. Burke unsnapped my leash, and I went to Grant, thinking he wanted both dogs. Lacey finally sprang out, her forelegs folding under her when she hit the ground. She got up, shaking herself. Grant turned and began running up the hill. But Lacey didn't run after him. Instead, she took a very slow step, as if the as if afraid the ground would bite her. Grant! Grant turned around. Lacey was walking sideways. Her back leg shivered, quivered, and she fell. I put my nose to her, and she licked my snout. Something was very, very wrong with her. You have to carry her. Grant picked up Lacey and ran toward the house, staggering under the load. The way Lacey's head lolled terrified me. I anxiously tried to follow, but Burke needed me to do pull, and the two of us ventured up much more slowly. By the time we reached the farmhouse, Grant and his truck were gone, and the scent of Lacey was on the wind, slowly fading away in the direction of the road. In the house, Burke talked to Grandma, and they hugged each other. Soon, Chase Dad came rumbling up on the slow truck. Any word he called as he walked in? Grant doesn't have his phone with him, Grandma responded. He left it sitting here when he heard Burke. I was napping in my room. I suppose under the circumstances, that's okay, that Grant's driving. But if he gets stopped, they'll yank his permit. You said he's a good driver for a 15-year-old. Sure. Burke petted me and I did sit. Dad? I called the Wedley. It's her dog. They're on the way over. Her and her dad, the Zanes, the robo farmer. Burke and his father looked at each other for a moment. Fair enough. Chase Dad finally said he went to Burke and put a hand on his shoulder. You sure it was a massacre? A rattlesnake? Yes, sir. I studied them in my biology unit last year. Our state's only poisonous snake. They're supposed to be extinct. I've never seen one. Burke, I'm sorry you had to go through this. Burke looked away, waves of sorrow flowing off him. I whimpered. I did not understand. What had just happened? Where was Lacey? Burke, you couldn't have prevented it, Grandma told him. Burke's mouth formed in a bitter line. If I had been able to get off the dock, if I had been there in the reeds with the dogs, I would have seen the snake. I could have called them off. I dug in my box of rubber balls and pulled out the squeaky toy. The smell of my lacy was painted all over the surface. I carried it with me to the dog bed. Later, we all reacted when we heard the unmistakable chug of Grant's truck. We waited on the porch and gazed out at him as he stood up. He shook his head and Grandma put a hand to her mouth. Oh no, she said softly. When we trudged up the ramp to join us, I smelled Lacey, but the sadness was pouring out of him and it washed over everyone, and I somehow understood. Lacey wasn't coming back. She was like Judy the old goat. What made her Lacey, made her my dog, had departed. The snake had somehow hurt her that badly. I whimpered and my boy reached out and stroked me. Grandma stooped to hold my head in her hands and stared into my eyes. You understand, don't you, Cooper? You understand what happened to Lacey. You're a young dog, but you've got an old, old soul. I licked her face. Thank God Cooper didn't get bitten, Chase Dad said. Another truck came up the driveway. It was Wendling and the man who always drove her. He had a long metal rod in his hand. Chase Dad turned to Grandma. He's got a rifle. Get the boys into the house.
Wow, that was quite a chapter. Chapter 12. Have a good day. I'm sad. These, these books always make me sad. Have a good one.